Hi folks, welcome to the shop update video. So this video is a story and I really hope it's a very relatable video with some good content and lessons for anyone out there who's starting a machine shop, running a machine shop, bringing products to market or trying to grow a company. If you've read any sort of business books or blogs or podcasts, folks will talk about when businesses hit a certain point in their size, whether it's number of products they sell per day or month or a revenue number or an employee number, we hit a point where we realize we have to stop what we're doing if this business is going to succeed. We need to reevaluate how this business is run. We call it overhaul the shop. There were some less friendly names to it as well, but overhaul the shop. Uh, and so we're not done with it yet, but we've been capturing video footage throughout this process to kind of document it because it's something that I've heard folks talk about, but to see it being implemented, I'm really hoping provides this kind of raw input. So number one is that problems that affect other businesses, especially with regards to growth, they're probably going to affect you at some point. And I think it's a great time to mention the book that Emith revisited. Whether you read the book or whether you just read the Cliff Notes version, it talks about growing a business where there's three different roles, the sort of technician or the worker, the manager, and that entrepreneur, that visionary, that thinker. And balancing those three different roles is something that we all go through. We wear different hats as we grow our business. And there's some really good nuggets in the Emith Revisit that really apply to how we've scaled this shop. Things like, even if it's just you, you're the only employee, create an org chart with different responsibilities and your name's gonna go in all of those places. But as you grow, you might hire your first intern or your first full-time employee or leverage a consultant or Upwork to help grow that. Ultimately, our goal this year in 2020 was to overhaul the shop. But that's the second lesson that we've learned is that goals are important and you need to establish the goal and then you've gotta focus all your effort not on the goal, but I'm breaking down the steps between now and the goal. That's the key to making this happen. And it's not easy, but that's what we're trying to share, the processes and the steps that we've taken this year to overhaul the shop. So the first thing I did was I broke this whole process down into five phases. We're filming this at the end of October. Um, this process started about four months ago. And one of the first things that we did was a giant purging of, of tools that were no longer in the right place or things that we didn't use, equipment that we didn't use. And it's funny because even in hindsight, it's very easy to talk about that. At the time, it was difficult. It was difficult to think about getting rid of stuff that maybe could be useful or there was nostalgia to it. But ultimately, looking back, I'm incredibly grateful uh, that we purged what we did. And you, if you look around the shop, you can already see like the, the, the shop behind, which is now racking, used to have a bunch of old manual machines and equipment that we just didn't use. We also reevaluated all of our toolboxes, the toolboxes that live next to the machines as well as throughout the shop. We've labeled them. That's going to set itself up to tie them into our ERP system. And we did a giant purge there as well. The biggest thing we knew we needed to do was build software to help us do what we do. We looked at ERP software for a while and I still would encourage it for smaller companies. There's some free or inexpensive ERP systems, but for us, We'd already built a uh, software to track some of our cutting tools. We'd used Upwork. We have a, a fellow here, Alex, who's pretty darn good with this stuff. And we realized, you know what? Let's build our own ERP. Uh, well, fast forward, that was one of the best decisions that we have ever made. Uh, the system is called Lex. We now barcode almost everything in the shop. Uh, we have red bins that we purchased. These happen to be from Uline, where we can track the main inventory as well as the second bin that triggers a reorder. Anybody in the shop can scan one of those barcodes. If it's a purchased part, it'll generate a PO that will go out to that vendor. Uh, that PO can be either automatically sent or it can be held in a queue so that we can batch things together. It lets us track all of our raw material. Uh, and just recently, we added in the location scanning. So one of the other things we knew we have to do was revisit how we look at the shop workflow. Uh, we bought some pallet racking to start. We've since added to it. And we've learned that pallet racking really only works if you've got safe and easy access to it with a forklift. So we've created a sort of U-shaped area, uh, which is gonna be our shipping and receiving, as well as give us the ability to easily and safely use a forklift to get into that material and also store the location tag. Location isn't too hard for some of the larger parts and products that we know, but for things like boxes, it's really hard to see from a distance or up on a high rack shelf what's where. 
And the beauty with a wireless barcode gun uh, and the Lex software is you can now track where something is, either the main location or a fancy word of breadcrumbs. Basically, if you have extra, where's the extra being stored? Our main product here at Saunders Machine Work is fixture plates. And for years, we made them uh, all on a VM3, which has a 26 by 40 travel range. We wanted to be able to offer larger fixture plates and we wanted to be able to scale and increase our productivity, which required uh, two different setups to make a fixture plate. So we upgraded, we got an identical pair of VF6s, which give us a travel range of 32 by 64, and we put sky hooks on each one of them, which have massively helped because now we've got the ability to safely load and lift material on and off the machine. You can use the sky hook to kind of place it right where you want, and you can either move the sky hook in the material, or sometimes it's easier to actually lower that material down and then just jog your XY table around to get that lined up when we go to load and unload material. We placed the PO for these. In 2020, buying two machines in March was not an easy decision. In hindsight, absolutely uh, the right decision. And I'll tell you, there are times when it's nerve wracking. It's hard to make these decisions. It really is. There's a lot of great quotes that I kind of revisit because I find them to be helpful in guiding you. And uh, one of them is the future will be kind to me for I intend to invent it. You know, we know we make a quality product. We know there's demand out there for them. It's up to us to make those efficiently to, at a quality level uh, and in a way that is scalable. And we now have that. We've got the ability to store the material we need, to move it around with the right equipment, to get it near the machine, loaded onto the machine. Um, and another big part of this has been overhauling how we think about our quality control, our setup sheets, our tooling. Uh, we've standardized tooling across the Haas VM3 and the two VF2s so that Generally speaking, any program can be run between any of those machines. The offsets and the coordinate system are the same, as well as a, a number of the initial base tools. This allows us a level of flexibility so that we can make a mod vice on one and a fixture pallet on the other, or swap them if for some reason they need to be on different machines due to demand, or we've got a shape oco plate running on one machine. Speaking of some of our products, we were spending too much time packaging. Packaging serves so many roles, not only protecting your product during shipment, but it's that chance to give that impression to the customer. And for us, we needed a better way to pack our products and not spend a lot of time bubble wrapping and, and questioning, uh, is this packed correctly? So we found a local packaging company. We went through a couple prototypes, but they created a mod vice package and a fixture pallet package, and then also working with them on things like our Shape Oco plates, which uh, those are gonna go to a broader audience and will ship ground, so we wanted to make sure that those plates, just, no one wants to get something that's damaged. Conversely, we also don't wanna spend a lot of time and a lot of expensive packaging material reinventing the wheel each time we need to ship something. So we're not done, but we're definitely over the hump, over the hurdle. Um, what's next? We are um, we bought a bunch of stuff called Maker Pipe that lets you turn EMT conduit or similar type pipe into customized work tables, assembly tables. And the backstory here is we have two uh, really large tables: one for shipping and one for uh, assembly and QC. And in all my years of our own shop and touring other shops. Uh, there's one thing that big tables are good at, it's accumulating junk. So what I'm excited about is we're going to be able to build customized tables for each of our product lines and each of the jobs. So we'll have a mod vice assembly table, we'll have a QC fixture plate table, we'll have a shipping table. And these tables can be designed how you'd want them to. So they can have the tape dispenser built in or a poly sealer built in flush to the table. It can have the tape gun or the micrometer. And there's a bunch of uh, little quirky things you can do like uh, they're on wheels, which I love because you can move them around or redo the layout. And um, the idea of putting some of your breadcrumbs on the back side of this moving cart. So the things that you need for that product but don't necessarily need every day, just like top off, are right there where you know they need to be. So that's starting next week. We'll film it and we'll put it into the follow-up video to this as we kind of wrap this project up. Uh, our goal is by the end of this year. We also worked with a high school to custom develop an automated coolant system. Uh, this was inspired largely by Metal Quest, but also a few of the other shops that we've toured where I don't want to sit here and continue to haul water around the shop. And that, that deserves its own video and own topic. But suffice it to say, it is absolutely awesome. And it gives us the ability to use a touch screen to push either RO water or coolant into the sump automatically as needed with no more hauling it around or getting messy or just not topping off the coolant because you don't want to. Similarly, I found that we weren't checking the bricks as much as I really thought that we should. And there's some cool solutions like inline refractometers that I like, but they're expensive. And so what I realize now 
a best solution is we're putting digital refractometers at every machine, or at least at most of the machines, because when that refract is right there by the coolant sump, no big deal to check that bricks and make a better decision about how you top off that coolant. And then finally, there's a ton of these like low hanging fruit quality of life improvements, and we're gonna list those out over on the NYC CNC page for this video. So things like, we got tired of blowing chips out of the T-slots on the VF6s, and it's a weird T-slot size. We couldn't find some of the T-slot strips commercially available, so we printed T-slot covers that saves us the hassle of getting chips in there. And we've got magnets now on our machines that say things like feed rate override or change inserts on face mill next part run. And we leave those inside the Haas cupboard, so when we need to change the inserts, retouch off a tool or switch a drill out, that magnet is already there and you just stick it on the door and it's an easy way to remind yourself. And I get excited about these things because they're, they're so simple and they're genius and we're all smart enough to think of these things, it's just a question of you gotta do it and put it into place. So check out that page if you wanna see more on kind of the continued evolution of how we're trying to improve this shop. Otherwise, we'll be back in hopefully two to three months with a follow-up video on uh, the successes and struggles of how we've continued this shop overhaul. Hope you folks learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you soon.